Welcome to my channel, I'm Denny, and today's video is going to be a review on my Saint Laurent medium envelope bag. So what I'll do is I'll take you through the bag, I'll give you a full bag tour, I'll share with you the dimensions of the bag, I'll give you pros and cons, the mod shots, the price, the story time of why I bought this bag, do I still think it's worth it, and would I purchase it again. So here is the Saint Laurent medium envelope bag. Mine here is in black with gold hardware. This envelope bag is made of the very well-known Saint Laurent pebbled leather or GDP or grain de poudre and it's very frequently compared to Chanel caviar leather. Now I have some thoughts on that and I'll talk about that later in the video. There's this beautiful tri-quilting on the front of the bag, there is the vertical quilts on the side of the bag, the chevron quilts in the middle of the bag and the diamond quilts on the bottom of the bag. So if you have trouble deciding on what quilt pattern you like, this one will cover a lot of bases. On the back of the bag, there is a slip pocket and that one is covered in diamond quilts. There's the beautiful YSL logo on the front there and it is secured with a magnetic closure which is relatively tight. On the inside of the bag, this portion is the GDP leather. There is one main compartment of the bag and that main compartment is lined with fabric. There's Saint Laurent Paris embossed in gold over there and also a Saint Laurent patch over there. It is one main compartment and a slip pocket over here. This bag has four grommets and through the grommets you can pull out the straps. Because of the four grommets you can double it up to make it a shoulder bag or very quickly convert it to a long strap to wear it long shoulder or crossbody. On the grommets there is Saint Laurent engraved on them. On the bottom of the bag, there are no feet. On the magnetic closure, mine still has a sticker on it. It is debossed with Saint Laurent Paris. On the leather straps as well, it also says Saint Laurent Paris. Now it's really hard to see, but the bag serial number is on the label at the bottom over here. It is debossed in it. In terms of the dimensions of the bag, this bag measures 24 centimeters in width, 17 centimeters in height, 7 centimeters in depth at its widest point at the base and the strap drop varies from 29 centimeters to 56 centimeters. So in this part of the video I'm going to talk about pros and cons of the bag plus the story time because it's just going to make the video flow a lot better. Now the first pro is that this bag in my opinion aesthetically is just stunning stunning just look at her i love how she is really structured and boxy so she looks really elegant and i find that she can elevate any outfit this bag does come in many many colorways and i've been obsessed about so many of them the off-white one the pink one the green one now this bag i purchased in early 2020 around the start of the pandemic and that was a time when i was still very conservative with picking my bags so i went for the very practical black and gold I also bought this because it reminded me of the Chanel Classic Flap. I did a whole video as to why I have not bought the Chanel Classic Flap. Now has this filled the gap for me? Oh, I'll cover that later in the video. <laughs> I also already covered earlier that this bag has this really beautiful tri-quilting. I think this is iconic to Saint Laurent. I think they really nailed it. I haven't seen any other fashion houses do something as beautiful. Now because the bag is so boxy and structured and beautiful, it comes along with all the cons of a boxy structured bag. The leather has to be relatively stiff in order for it to maintain its structure. For that reason, it's not that easy to open and get into. The magnetic closure is secure but it's not too bad. However, in order to get into it, you do have to fight the bag a little bit. If I hold the bag like this, you can see how there's still a lot of memory in that leather and it doesn't actually want to open up that much. <laughs> Although I've owned this bag for two and a half years now, I haven't had too much opportunity to use it and part of it is you know, not the bag's fault. I have a very busy working life and I also have a little girl that goes to the beach and the playground and I find this to be quite a fussy bag. It's not a bag that I can get in and out of really quickly and it's kind of a bag that is too big to carry as a second bag with a diaper backpack and kind of too small to use as a bag without a diaper bag. <laughs> Alright, so moving on to what I think is the biggest con of this bag. This back pocket, in my opinion, is the ultimate disappointment. If you look at it, you have such high expectations for it. It is so big. That's my hand over there. You would think that a phone could fit in. Now please observe that Saint Laurent has gone ahead and put stitches in on either side of this pocket over here and that just makes that pocket a little bit tighter. On top of the fact that the leather is really quite stiff, it's not that easy to get into this back pocket. 
Now let me show you over here. This is my phone. And this is the size of my phone in relation to the back pocket. You'd think that it would fit in. So let me try and fit my phone in. <laughs> there you go. Like it squeezes in. And let me show you how tight this pocket is. <laughs> so it is, it is really tight. In this pocket, I would never put my phone this way because it would be really uncomfortable to try and get my fingers in to pull my phone out. Now, I do have a thick phone case. This is the iPhone 13 mini, so a small phone, but a thick phone case. Could you try a thinner phone? Sure, I think you could. And I think over time, the leather might soften, but my concern would be that it would cause a rub point against the leather over here. The other con of a very structured bag is that it is very prone to corner wear. I don't have a lot of corner wear because I really haven't used this bag quite enough. However, my Saint Laurent wallet on chain I've used much more heavily and there's a chip in that wallet on chain. So since then, I've generally been quite gentle with this bag anyway. Remember how I said that this GDP leather is often compared to Chanel caviar leather? It's not to say that I have a lot of Chanel caviar leather bags. However, I do have a caviar square mini and the feel of that caviar leather is really not as stiff as the GDP leather. It is really quite easy to open my square mini. I don't feel like I have to fight it. <laughs> So although I said that this bag is really quite dressy looking, I actually think that if you're having a dressier day, this bag can transition really well from day to night. So for example, if you're quite well dressed in like a blazer or a nice jacket during the daytime, you can take this for a bit of shopping or for lunch. And if you are going to transition into an evening semi-formal dinner, I think this would work really well as well. The other pro about this bag, I have to say, is the straps. I really appreciate that it's a combination of chain strap as well as leather panels. The chain straps really elevates the look of the bag and the leather panels actually makes it really comfortable to carry the bag on your shoulder. I am 5 foot 1 or 152 centimeters. When the strap is doubled up, I find that it sits at the perfect height for me. It doesn't go so high into my underarm and also it's just the right height for me to reach my items. I also appreciate that it can convert to a longer strap. Now, when I do that with this bag, the strap is actually too long for me to wear crossbody or long shoulder, but I appreciate that the option is there just in case I need to wear my bag crossbody just for short periods of time during the day. The other con of the bag is these gussets on either side of the bag. They take up so much internal room and so much real estate of the bag, and you essentially have a very small space to store your items. So this bag doesn't actually fit that much. I've already done a dedicated what fits in my bag video. The essentials do fit, but just bear in mind that this bag looks a lot bigger than its capacity. And if you want to see exactly what fits, I've linked my video in the description box below. The other con of this bag is that it doesn't stand that well. Now, when it is filled, it's probably a little bit better provided that you've balanced your items correctly inside the bag. But um, if the chains are out, um, it, it's not going to stand up on its own. Alright. <laughs> and this is why, for most of the video, I've had to hold on to the bag. <laughs> It's not going to do it. <laughs> in terms of price, this bag currently retails for 3350 Australian dollars on the official Saint Laurent website. When I purchased this in 2020, it was approximately 3100 Australian dollars on the official Saint Laurent website. So about $150 price increase over the last two and a half years or so. That's not as big a price increase as some of the other Saint Laurent bags. I think that is a reflection of the popularity of this bag. So although I still think this bag is relatively popular, I think it's not as popular as some of the other Saint Laurent bags. Back in 2020 though, I did get the bag slightly off retail, maybe two or three hundred dollars off retail. And that was because I found this bag on a third party website. So I purchased it off net a -Porte. So net a -Porte is based in Hong Kong and at that time the Hong Kong rights were all the rage and I don't know whether that affected the stock and the pricing but 
Um, if you're looking for a discount, I would encourage you to not shop off the Saint Laurent official website <laughs> or the official store. Look at third party websites like Netaporte, Italist, or if you're based in Australia, look at department stores like David Jones because sometimes David Jones will have a sale and some of these designer bags will be included in a sale and also remember that you can collect David Jones points. I've also heard some English retailers like Selfridges seem to have a lower retail price anyway compared to Australia and some people have said that it's cheaper to purchase from Selfridges and despite import duties and delivery fees, the total price is still under Australian retail price. Also, don't forget that you can shop via cashback websites. In Australia, I use cashrewards.com.au and there are a ton of websites that you can get cashback from if you use cashrewards.com.au. Now, I have a referral link. If you go ahead and use my link, I will get a small commission. Thank you so much for your support if you go ahead and do that. In terms of whether I think this bag is worth its price point, I actually think it is if you are looking for a statement bag. I think this bag has not seen as much price increases as some of the other bags. Even if we think of the Valentino Roman Stud range, that is over 4,000 Australian dollars. And this is still in the low 3,000s. Saint Laurent has also discontinued discounts as much as possible on their bags. So I find that they tend to hold value. And I feel like the interest in Saint Laurent on the secondhand market is also growing. So in my mind, the resellability of the envelope bag is actually not bad. If I didn't have this bag, would I purchase it again? To be honest, probably not especially not with my current collection. I have just done a lot of shopping in the last couple of years and there are other bags in my collection that will fill the gap of this bag. I feel like this bag I can really only take for lunches and dinners and on those occasions I prefer to use my Lady Dior or my Birkin 25. <sighs> and right now I kind of want a Chanel classic flap. <laughs> but anyway, that's a whole other story and when I finally buy a Chanel classic flap and unbox it on my channel, uh, I can tell you all about that. However, now that I have this bag in my collection, am I planning to sell it? Um, no. <laughs> Not yet anyway. Now this is going to be a controversial opinion. I know some of us in our community don't like thinking about the luxury brands in tears, right? Now, it doesn't matter what I think. It is what society thinks. And there are tears in the luxury world. I do feel and get treated a bit differently when I carry my Chanel bag versus carrying a Saint Laurent bag. And there are times when I just want to leave my Dior, my Chanel, my Louis Vuitton and my Hermes bags at home and I just want to carry a Saint Laurent bag. So that's one reason why I'm hanging on to at least one Saint Laurent bag. I only have two bags. I have uh, this bag and my wallet on chain. I'm not sure I will keep both, I don't know. I'm, I'm still thinking. I'm still thinking. I just don't want to have any seller's remorse. So we'll see. So right now I'm going to overlay some mod shots. If you enjoyed this video, certainly give me a like. If you think I deserve to be tipped for this video, go ahead and leave me a super thanks where you can nominate a monetary amount to contribute to the channel. Thank you so much for your support. Either way, thank you so much for watching to this part of the video. If you're interested in looking at what fits in this bag, certainly click on the link on screen.